This is the third in our series of the Ultimate Chicken Run and we're at a stage where we can just pick the chickens up and put them in. Everything we do now is optional, but we are going to do more. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. My name's Hugh, together with the fabulous Fiona, I run a small holding here in rural Lincolnshire. And in rural Lincolnshire, it gets really windy. Today, it's heckish windy. We're doing everything we can to minimise the wind noise, but you're probably going to hear it howling through the trees in the background. I'm sorry about that. We'll do the very best we can. Anyway, today, this video is all about our ultimate chicken run. This has been a big project for both of us this year, and we're putting together what we consider to be the ultimate chicken run for a number of reasons. But a lot of the things that prompted us to it is for a number of years, we've been having housing restrictions because of avian influenza and we've improvised solutions and they've been great, but ultimately they're temporary solutions. And it's now happened often enough that we think as part of our responsible chicken ownership, we need a permanent solution that we can easily move the birds into any time that, that kind of thing happens. But there's lots of other reasons to have a good chicken run as well. They represent brilliant security against predators, both aerial and land-based. They're also fantastic for containing your flock if you don't have a safe, sensible area to free range. So there's all sorts of good reasons to have them. Today, we're going to walk you through our finished design because we've put together the run now, it's complete. We're going to talk about our choice of coops to go inside that are right for our flock's winter's quarters. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about some of the other security measures that we're going to put in place. We've come a long way with this enclosure. So what have we done? Let's have a quick summary. In episode one, we put the frame up and we put this one inch weld mesh on the sides, but we left the gable ends free. In episode two, we put all of the enrichment in and that was big equipment and needed to go in before we put this weld mesh gable ends on. And that's what we've been doing. So in episode three, we have finished it off and we can now talk about all of the key features and one of the main things is security for the chickens inside because we have extended the weld mesh significantly away from the frame and why would we do that well mr foxy comes along wants to get in and our lovely little fluffy chickens on the inside now the only problem is he's got to dig underneath to get in usually foxes will dig as close as possible because that's the least amount of effort but because we've extended the weld mesh out he's going to find it much more difficult and the more likely scenario is Mr Fox is going to go hunting for much easier prey. Now the other big thing which we've done is we have chosen to put doors in either end of this enclosure. And Why have we chosen to do that? Well it's for practical reasons. So the morning routine for me is always to a poop egg in the coops because I like our fluffy little chickens to be in clean areas. So I leave the house, go in the door at the other end, and I'll pick the coops for all of the poop in there and then I need to get to the compost areas. And where are the compost areas? Well, they're at this end, near the fields where the chickens free range at the moment. Now, unfortunately, um, Hugh and I have come up with a slight flaw in the plan while we've been filming because I realise we've got bolts on the outsides of the doors. Now, if I'm coming in the door at the other end and I need to get out of this door, how am I going to get out when the bolt's on the outside? And how am I going to secure the door at that end when there's no bolt on the inside? So we have got a little job to do for ourselves, which is to put bolts inside and out. Now, it doesn't matter that there's two bolts because only one of them is going to be closed over at any one time. So when I come into the area in the morning, I'm going to unbolt the outside bolt in the door at the far end and then close the inside bolt to secure it, undo the inside bolt at this end and close the outside bolt at this end. Then I'm going to empty all of the compost but then I'm going to walk back through so that by the time I actually come in to do the same routine the following morning, the two bolts which are closed over are the inside bolt at this end and the outside bolt at the other end. Trust me, it does work, but I wish we'd thought of that before we started filming this segment. But you live and you learn. Let's 
talk about security. And of course, in reference to chickens, we're going to talk about Norman Mott and Bailey Castles, because why wouldn't we? What's a Mott and Bailey Castle? It's a sort of inner keep with an outer perimeter wall. Inner keep. Here, we're going to put an outer perimeter. Now, we've already got good defences. As Fern has mentioned, we've got well-meshed walls. We've got a skirt that comes out. And that should prevent any creature walking up to the wall, digging easily underneath, getting up in the middle. But they could still do it. They could dig over here. That could happen. And actually, Kev over at English Homesteads had that happen to him. There's ways to prevent that. You can put, if you're in a really diggy area where that sort of thing happens a lot, you can put a weld mesh floor inside your run. Garden Life Direct offer those as an option. But that's not the way we've gone. We want to create this bailey, this curtain wall, this outer perimeter to our structure. So we've left big corridors around the run. And we're going to put an electric fence a good way away. Obviously, the electric fence cannot be at risk, even in strong winds like today, of touching the metal structure. So we need a good area where we will have a walkway around the run. Also good so that we can then get around the run, remove leaves and things that get down onto it, do a bit of basic maintenance work. So our electric fence has to suit our needs. And Fiona's already told you about coming and going from both ends. So we're going to need gates in that electric fence at both ends. That makes the wiring a bit more complicated. It's a high wind area, so we're going to need additional poles. We also don't have any power here. We're in the sort of back end of the garden. So we're going to need a way of powering. We could just swap batteries backwards and forwards, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go with an innovative new kind of energizer that has built-in solar panels and can recharge itself to keep the whole thing safe and secure. It's quite a tricky project for an electric fence. It's not totally so, sort of straightforward. So I'm going to do an extra video on that to show you that setup. The second strand of the security approach that I want for the ultimate chicken run is to have cameras on it, some form of visibility. We've already got those on the main chicken field. And they're incredibly helpful for from the mundane. Just you can go onto your phone if you're not at home. Make sure all the chickens have got themselves in when the doors come down automatically at night through to the more advanced. So ours can give us alerts if something comes around the run after the hours of darkness. And it's caught foxes doing exactly that and testing the electric fence. So we've found them really, really useful. And I want to have that same utility around the ultimate chicken run. Now I've done a little bit of research and I've made a purchase, but I'm not sure it's the right purchase. But let me tell you what I've bought. So I've bought two of these. I think they cost 90 quid. These are ring stick-up cameras. They're battery powered. There is a mains option as well. They work day and night, but they don't have lights on them. They're motion activated and they have multiple mounting facilities. They come with a little stand and they can either sit on that stand or that stand can be attached to something and then put into the back of the camera as multiple mounting points. So you can screw the camera up against the wall, you can hang it from a ceiling, you can have it freestanding. Why is that so important to me? Well, one of the things that occurred to me is with having those options is when we've got broodies in the summer, we could demount those cameras from the Ultimate Chicken Run, put them on a little tripod and use them in to monitor broodies. But as I say, they do have to ha be in a Wi-Fi area and in order to download and to study footage, you have to have a subscription to a ring service that lets you do that. We've already got that service for our other cameras on the doorbells and covering the main chicken area, so there's no extra cost for us. But that is something to be aware of because other cameras work in different ways. And I'm not sure that these are the best choice for the ultimate chicken one. If you know something that you think would be better, please tell me in the comments what it is. Because it's a subject I'm interested in, but I'm not that clued up on it, and I'd like to learn more. Let's have a look at Coop. So what have we chosen for this ultimate chicken run? And regular viewers of the channel are not going to be surprised that we have chosen two Nestera Coops. And we've got all four in the range. So why have we chosen the two that we've got? Well, the first thing we considered is the breeds of chickens that are going to come in here. We're going right down to our core breeding group in winter for our Buff Warpington. So it's a small amount of hens and cockles. So they've got one set of requirements. And then we've got another set of chickens which are just six 
um, egg layers. There's two extra shekel egg corns, two cream leg bars, and two copper black morans. And they like to climb, they like to perch, so they have a different set of needs. Our big, giant, fluffy buff orpingtons, though, like low spaces, they don't like climbing. So we've chosen the Nestero wagon. And it's really good because it's got this lovely low ramp for them to get in. And it's very easy for me to clean because it's got easy access at the front with a fully swinging door. Now they will sleep on the floor. They don't like perching to sleep. So they will sleep on the floor, but one or two of the young ones do like to actually get a little bit of room and they will go on what we call a mezzanine layer. So essentially the large chickens have got two levels to have a go at. But why the Nestero ones? Well, we have got loads and loads of coops now. So we've got commercial ones, which we bought when we first started keeping chickens. And we've replaced every single part of them. Nestero coops come with a 25 year guarantee. As I've said, they're easy clean. They've got these big sheets of nine millimeter plastic, which actually means that I can clean them out really quickly. It's awkward for me to get into this space with hoses, with buckets, and then it's an enclosed space so I need to get it done quickly so the chickens don't get essentially freaked out because you've got hoses and water spraying and, and generally they don't like that aspect. So I can get it done very, very quickly. The red mite resistant because of that because there's very few places for red mite to hide. So that's why we've chosen the Nestera Coops overall. But we've shown you the wagon. Let me show you what we've got for our egg layer breeds. So the wagon is suitable for the Orpingtons because they're big, fluffy creatures who like to sleep on the floor. This coop is very different. This is a large race coop and this is going to house our egg layers. Now we've only got a few, but we've got a mix of three breeds. They're Exchequer Laircons, Cream Leg Bars and Copper Black Morans and they love to climb, they love to play, they love to get up high and they love to perch. I've got a real battle at the moment to stop them getting incredibly high in the large cherry tree in the free range area and it's my own fault because I taught them to climb it but I didn't expect them to go as high as they do. Anyway this is going to be their coop and why is it perfect? Well first of all it is higher up and they do like to climb but that height gives me some advantages. The first is I don't have to lean down to actually clean it so I can just take the back off and get direct access. The perch is inside because these young chicks do like to actually perch gives me this advantage. And what are these? Well these are droppings trays and they sit directly underneath the perches. Now they're not suitable for the Orpington's coops because with them being on the floor this high sides here would actually dig into them but because these chickens do like to perch I can pop these underneath and when I need to clean out I can just pull these trays out and tip whatever I want into a bucket they are absolutely fantastic the height gives us a couple of other advantages the first is we've got solid sides why is that an advantage? Well, we live in Lincolnshire with very, very high winds because it's a flat land and the wind just whips straight through. And this weld mesh gives a little bit of wind protection, but not a great deal. Whereas the solid sides actually do protect the chickens completely from that wind coming through. Now we have provided other shelters, but it's a, essentially a free shelter, not taking up more space. It comes complete with the coop, fabulous. What other advantage does it give us? Well, if we do have to use the chicken run for flock down in the UK, where we have to keep the chickens undercover, and this is to prevent the spread of avian influenza, we are required by law to ensure that any feeders and drinkers are away from where wild birds might actually poop infected material into the food and water. All we'd have to do is put a feeder and drinker underneath. Now for us we have got other things we can do with feeders and drinkers and we can show you that in our avian influenza um, videos and I'm just going to put a link up above to last year's avian influenza video so you can see what we did there. But for anyone else just pop your feeder and drinker underneath there solves all of the problems but this is why this coop is the perfect choice for the ultimate chicken run. So that is the run part and the major fit out of the interior of our ultimate chicken run. Two very different coops for two very different types of birds. I'm going to put a link down in the description where you can find your own Nostera coops and you'll get 5% off by following our links. I'll also put a link 
to the Garden Life Direct runs. We've got no discount codes at the moment for them because they've got a 30% off deal at the time of filming on all their runs, which is an amazing deal. And as people who've put three of them in, we really trust and really like them. They're incredibly solid. I'm also gonna put a link down there to the ring cameras that we chose and bought. I'm not certain they're the very best choice for CCTV for chickens, because I don't think many people have thought of it that way. And if you know a lot about that subject and you know a better option, please let me know in the comments what it is and preferably link to it so I can go and have a look and educate myself. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see the next episode, which will be on the whole setup for the off-grid self-managing electric fence, then click on subscribe down there and the bell next to it, and you'll hear every time we upload a new video. It's a completely free service. For today, we're sorry about the wind noise. It is November, but thanks for watching and come back and see us soon. Take care.